Hello and welcome back to Etec Hunting. We've got some brand new pellets today from JTS. We're going to test them out. We're going to go hunting with them today. It is raining, but we're going to make it work. We're also going to try and do some accuracy testing for you. So watch out for that as well. So sit back and enjoy. Right, so this is going to be the gun today. This is the FX Crown Mark II in the GRS stock. And the reason I chose this gun is because this gun is set up to shoot the 21 grain javelins at 930 feet per second. We used it in a previous video, which I will link down below. And because these JTS we're going to shoot today is 22 grains, I can just throw them in here. I don't have to retune the gun and it will shoot at around 910 feet per second which is perfect speed for pellets. So it just makes my life a little bit easier. I don't have to redo anything. The only thing I had to redo was the scope tape, which I'll talk about later in this video. But yeah, let's just go through this gun quickly. As I said, GRA stock. I've got the Element Optic Nexus on here. We've got the Sabre Tactical Bottle Clamp to put the, the Acutec bipod on there. And then we've got the Donny FL Tatsu Silencer on the front there. Yeah, so a nice setup for pellet shooting. Very accurate. So let's get to it. As you can see, it is still raining, but we're going to continue anyway. Hopefully the rain will go away. There are some birds around on the roofs and stuff, and we've got this massive undercover roof here that we can roam around and shoot from. So I think we'll be okay. So yeah, let's set up the gun quickly, check zero, and then go from there. So these are pretty heavy pellets, but they're not weird looking at all. They look pretty traditional, and I think what they've done is they just filled up the skirts with lead on the inside there, if we can see there. Um, and I think these are pretty hard lead and the reason why I'm saying that is they look pretty good and I've flown these from Utah in my luggage and they've banged it up pretty badly so as you can see there on the tents they got pretty big dents on them but the pellets are still fine no skirts are dented anything like that so that's a good sign already um, but yeah we'll have to see how they expand and what they do on the birds because I suspect as I said very hard lead why do you stick on little bits of plaster? Um, the reason why I did that is I lost my little o-rings there that gives a little bit of friction in the gun. But just a little plaster on the inside um, brings that friction back so the magazines don't slip out of the gun. These are very old magazines and they've seen quite a bit of action. And eventually you just lose these little o-rings that are in there. The glue just goes and they fall away. And then what happens is when you cycle the gun, the magazine just falls out of the breech because there's no friction there. But this is a very easy remedy. Just a bit of plaster on the inside. One little bit of yeah, single piece of plaster in there and the, the friction is back and the magazine stays in the gun. So instead of using the little o-ring there that provides friction on the breech for the magazine not to slip out, I just put a, the plaster on the inside there. And just, that just lifts the, the magazine cover a little bit, not much, but it's just enough so that there is no friction or enough friction so that the magazine don't slip out. So you can see that it just stays in there, I can move it around, doesn't slip out. Without that, when you load the gun, the magazine will just whoop, fall out like that. But yeah, that's an easy solution that I found um, because I don't have these little O-rings and I've lost them somewhere on the farm, so there's no way for me to find them again. Okay, so we're just going to do a quick zero check on 20 meters and get that box out of the rain because that's not going to hold up if it gets wet. So let's just do this quickly. Spot on. So we're just going to leave it right there. Um, put the scope caps back on there. Here we go. Okay, so Maggie spotted a bird already, so she grabbed the gun as soon as I done that zero. There's actually quite a few pigeons on the roof. Look at that. I don't know if you can see them. I'll see if I can crop in a little bit there. Yeah, it's about one, four of them. First one just flew around the back. And Maggie is setting up here. Let's get this done. Yeah, he's down. Got that one at 55 meters. Through the rain. Yes. <laughs> Maggie makes a solid connection on the first one and he goes down with the rain. 
it's the lighting conditions for the cameras are not great so I hope everything comes out okay it might be a bit grainy on the footage but we're going to continue anyway uh, Maggie just spotted two more I think also underneath the roof only problem about shooting underneath this roof is very dark down there so the scope cam footage are not going to be very good yay 62 meters nice Maggie forgot to adjust the distance on this shot and the result was a little low. I was up next and I made my way to the other side of the barn. Shoot from the side of this. It's going to be a far shot. Ooh. Dead on, 94 meters. They hit pretty hard these pellets. I wasn't expecting them to expand like that because the lead seemed very hot, but that was a loud pop and it just went straight on. This was the first long range shot and the pellet travels perfectly through the air. Another good sign. So Maggie is just searching through the trees. It is so dark that it's really difficult to see the birds. So we're using the scope and just scanning through the trees to find them. They are there and they're also hiding away from the rain. So they're sitting in between the brush and things like that. So it's not easy to find them. But so far Maggie has been pretty successful at it. She's pretty good at it. So we're finding them. I think after that hit, they just all went. Oh, that pop was a bit loud. It was time to move on again and I found some activity on a nearby roof. three meters and down man this thing is dead on accurate there's also no wind really today so that also helps a slight little breeze but nothing hectic uh, let's see if we can get that one and down it goes shot after shot. I'm really impressed with these pellets. These little sparrows can be very active, so timing your shot correctly can be tricky with them. It also helps to learn their body language because then you can kind of predict their next move. Okay, so Maggie's got a pigeon at 56 meters. Probably a little closer now. Yay! Okay, it was walking so I had to move quickly. Well done. <laughs> Shooting a bird on the move takes some serious skill and Maggie nails this one. Well, if you ever wondered where the balance point on this Crown GRS is, there you go, right underneath the breech. And that is why this is also one of our most favorite hunting rifles, um, because it's such a comfortable rifle to shoot with and having a balance point right there is just what you want. So I think just after the Wildcat BT, this is my second most favorite gun to hunt with. The rain is just relentless today. It's still coming down like crazy. There's nothing we can do about that. And we just keep on circling around underneath this roof structure here. Just try and, try and stay dry. And it actually works. We got a few down already. Uh, Maggie's doing all the spotting and getting it done. And I forgot my box in the rain, the target. So very clever roof. <laughs> Thing is soaked now. Uh, but yeah, that's how it goes. Looks like Maggie's got a dove in her sights. Yay! That's a good one at 70 meters. Nice. Another perfect flight trajectory by the JTS pellet and a solid impact. So this is actually working out pretty well. You actually get things done and there's actually birds out in the tree, which I thought wasn't going to be the case. It's not raining hard enough for them to be uh, in, in shelter or anything like that, but it's just that like constant dribbling away. Um, and the birds are still flying around in it, so it's actually perfect and we're getting it done. Ooh, what feathers on that one. Lows. Well, you can't get them all and I missed this one by a very slim margin. We found a few pigeons on the roof. There you go. Nice short distance. Nice. 
Yes, nice pop. 33 meters and there's the whole flock going. <laughs> we might sit down again. Yeah. An easy shot for Maggie as this pigeon get to know a JTS pellet. With all those pigeons up in the air, we decided to move away and look for other opportunities. <laughs> 40 meters. Uh, so much fun. We kept on moving and soon found another target for Maggie. Yes, coffin shot. There's another one. Ah, flew away. Taking that. No. My camera had to do it. Okay, hold on. Okay. And the one nice. at 50 <laughs> meters. Maggie hits the first one right in the off switch, resulting in what she calls the coffin shot. She then does exactly the same to the second one, both falling motionless to the ground. My circle my dear Nikki. It's behind the branches. That was like a lucky shot at 70 meters. A wise man once said, the more you practice, the luckier you get. This is certainly true for Maggie. Yo, another nice one at 47 meters. Another one right in the off switch and down he goes. So far they are dead center accurate like they say on a tin there. And it's the first heavy 22 cal pellet that doesn't give any spirals and they just work. So I'm very impressed. I think the other manufacturers should be scared. These are really, really good. And uh, yeah, we're enjoying them so far. They hit really hard. I thought the lead's gonna be a little bit hard, but it makes no difference because it's a don't pellet. It just takes them down. Like you saw on the, on the footage so far, they just drop down, straight down. Um, yeah, so yeah, very impressed. <laughs> Down he goes, 35 meters, nice and short. Not an easy position this, but I made it work. Yet another one dropped straight to the ground, proving my point even further. Then it was time to move on again, and soon we found a few more sparrows. Down he goes, 49 meters. This time the pellet delivers a devastating impact, resulting in a small explosion. So finally the rain subsided and we can venture out from underneath the roof. Awesome. I see a pigeon on the roof. We have to go around this side. Ooh. Very muddy. Do this. Oh, that doesn't work. <laughs> Got him. 50 meters. This pellet travels straight through his vitals. He rolls down the roof and expires on the ground. It's a big heavy one. Thank you. So that's my my pigeon. Got him. So this is going to be donated to the Falcon Rehabilitation Center. So that's what we do with these. So we keep them and then take them there. Oh, starling. Now this is going to be very difficult. Oh, that one's giving me a shot. There it goes. Boop. Boop. Yeah. He flew a little and then went That's down. Quiet. I kind of rushed that shot because I was scared if he was going to fly away again. It was a nice pop and eventually it did go down. 
This wasn't a good shot and I hit him very low. He flew a little but then ran out of steam and fell to the ground. Then it was time to move on again. And down he goes, 50 meters. This pellet hits him hard and a flaring tail is always a good sign of a lethal hit. And down goes a sparrow, 50 meters. Okay, I think while we have a, a break in the rain quickly, we're going to do the 100 meter group for you with these pellets. So we're just going to set up here, there's no wind currently, or very little wind. So it's a perfect time now, so let's just get that done quickly. A few moments later. Right, so we're going to shoot a 100 meter group quickly. I'm also going to record uh, ballistic information for this pellet for you using the brand new FX ballistic chronograph or true ballistic chronograph. So I'm going to set this up at intervals of 20, 40, 60 and 80 meters and uh, measure the average BC from there. So let me just show you here quickly, like if you can record here. So we quickly do the, the setup. So we go config. So this chronograph can uh, record any projectile going between 400 and 4,000 feet per second. So it's perfectly fine for firearms as well. Uh, I'm going to select that. And then the primary unit, we're going to select as feet per second. Secondary unit, we're going to go feet, foot pounds. You can also select other options there. And then weight. We're going to go grain, distance unit, we're going to go meters, you can go yards as well if you're in the US. And then my first distance I'm going to set at uh, 20 meters. Thank you Maggie. And then the second distance we're going to go 40. And then third we're going to go 60. And then fourth, 80. Whoops, went a bit over there. And 80 meters, and then projectile weight. These pellets are 22.09 grain, so I'm just gonna go 22.1 grain, that's close enough. And then barrel offset, we're gonna put it right close to the barrel, which is the best option. So between zero and 20 centimeters, probably gonna be closer than that, so that setting is fine. And then we don't need to worry about channel here. This you use if you have more than one crony, like at a shooting range. Uh, one guy will select channel one, the second guy will select channel two. We're just gonna go channel one. We're not gonna worry about shutdown time. That's just to save battery. And then drag model, because this is a pellet, we're gonna go G1. There's also other um, projectile drag models in here. Um, they're adding more and more as we speak, and that will be done with firmware upgrades. So we're just gonna use G1 for now. Um, that's the best one for a pellet anyway. And then Bluetooth setting, if we're going to connect to the FX app to record all the data, that we can also do, but today we're not going to really do that. Maybe I will. Maybe I'll put it on. Let's see. And that's it. I'm going to leave that on. And interference meter, this will tell you, if you leave that on, whether there's interference in the area. And then trigger sensitivity you can play with. I'm just going to lose it, uh, use it on the default setting, which is medium. And then that's it. And then remember to click save and not exit without saving. So just gonna go save there. And then we can set up the target and get going. So what's nice is the cover for this chronograph with like that is also the, the foot stand. So you just take it out of there. And then in there's a little thing. You can also put the chronograph on a tripod. It's got a mount for that. And it's got the same mount on here. So we just, because we're shooting off a table, I'm just gonna use the foot stand or the cover as a foot stand, and that's it. I'm gonna put that on the chair, and that you just put next to the gun like that. And then you aim through this little aim uh, device here, a little straw, you just put that on the target, and off you go. Maggie, you can just stand behind the, the desk or the table there. I'm getting 125 now. Uh, it's because Maggie is wearing a black jacket, 100 on the dot. Can't really feel any breeze out here currently, it's pretty quiet. Okay, so the crony is armed, all ready to go, and it's pointing directly at the target. 
Got a camera down there. It's a GoPro, so I hope, I really hope it doesn't die on me. Because <laughs> I've I haven't had much luck with GoPros these days. So let's hope this works. So we've got the crony there, all ready to go. I'm gonna dial a hundred on the dial here because I've I've already done my BC calculations with this crony and already put it in my ballistic calculator to make the scope cape. But I'm just doing this now again to show you how I've done it. So yeah, let's go. So we've got 100 there. I'm gonna go 100 there on the parallax. Finally caught this on the scope cam and let's hope the GoPros play along. Okay, there's some shots at the top of the target. Um, so I'm gonna go third row from the top. Let me see if I can see the little dot there. Yeah, okay, got it. Eight hundred ninety eight nine hundred eleven. Yeah, it's so dark, I can barely see. Nine hundred fourteen. Nine hundred eight. 913 915 913 900 Feel a little breeze 12. coming up now from left to right 910 900 Twenty nine hundred twenty four. You can see a nice group forming there, and we're out of pellets. So yeah, not bad at all. It's, I don't know if you can see this because Maggie said it glared pretty badly on the previous video, but I can now go and check. So it gives me my speed increments on every distance that I've set: 20, 40, 60, and 80 meters. And then over here, I can see I've fired 11 shots. My low was 898, that was the first shot. It's very cold today, so the first shot will always be a little low. And as the gun warms up as you shoot, it will go higher. So I don't expect a very good spread today. Um, so standard deviation, 6.3. Spread was 26, which is pretty high, but giving the conditions today, that is just what it is. And then it gives me my BC for every shot, and then the average BC as well, which is 0.054 for these pellets. That's also the BC I used in my ballistic calculator because this is the actual BC for my gun shooting this pellet at this speed. No published BC will be spot on for your gun. That is why this thing is such a brilliant tool to have because you can now get your exact BC. Okay, so there you go. I was aiming for that point over there. And it is shooting, you can see there's my thumb. That's a pretty good group for 100 meters. No flyers, you can see there's just a bit of a vertical movement there, but there was a slight breeze that came up and died. Um, yeah, it's not a lot, but it's enough to push it a little bit. But that is pretty decent, I mean, just look at that. That's a sparrow at 100 meters every time. Very awesome stuff. Well, that is it for today. The rain is coming down again, so we're gonna end it here. We had loads of fun, got a bunch of hunting footage in which we didn't expect to get done in this rain today, but we kind of made it work with the roof structure back here. And we got the 100 meter group in very quiet conditions, no wind at all, which was also pure luck. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. If you did, please like the video. Remember to subscribe, follow us on Instagram, and then we'll see you next time. Cheers. Yeah.